Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab and this is the biggest controller ever. But first, some context. Xbox is rubbish, but when I say that, really, I'm talking about the Xbox 360 and the Xbox One. The Xbox 360 started life as a great machine. It had the Blades dashboard, Xbox Live Arcade was fresh and exciting, and we had great games like Final Fantasy XI and Halo 3. By the end of its life, we got a dashboard which was a glorified advertisement space. Xbox Live Arcade was not just delisting games, but straight up deleting them from their servers, and the first party games were utter dog. The Xbox One has been an utter disaster from beginning to end. First gamers were told to hashtag deal with it when everyone found out Microsoft wanted to make their machine always online and not accept used games. Then they were forced to have a spying device attached at all times. They had an exclusive game lineup so thin Coldplay were going to do a benefit concert for it. And all of this was orchestrated by a guy who looks like a used car salesman. It wasn't always like this. The original Xbox was a machine that was just incredible. It had the best online service, it was a very powerful piece of hardware, and the exclusive games were out of this world. Jet Set Radio Future, Amped, Dead or Alive 3, Halo 2, Ninja Gaiden, Project Gotham Racing, these were all great reasons to own an original Xbox. But one game's release was so special because it defied all logic. Steel Battalion from Capcom, a mech simulator which cost £250 because the extravagant controller it came with. Who loves mech games? The Japanese. Who wouldn't buy an Xbox even if it came with a free love pillow? The Japanese. So making this game an Xbox exclusive seems insane. But it did come out. I bought it. Let's have a look. So when this monster was shipped to me, this huge cardboard box turns up. A closer inspection actually shows that even this shipping box has the Steel Battalion logo on it. Once you open the shipping box, you can remove the actual game box, which is this green military style case. Made to look like a metal container, but it's still cardboard. This thing is quite a lump, but comes with a green plastic handle, which is prone to snapping, so don't carry it with that. The manual that shows you how to use the controller is an entire book to get anywhere in this game you will need to read this thing to really understand how to pilot the mechs properly and actually use the 44 different buttons on the controller which is officially called the mega jockey 9000 that is an incredible name next you have to unpack the mega jockey 9000 controller which comes in three sections plus the pedals on the back of the center controller section there's an allen key and the names of the steel battalion team you use the provided allen key with the provided bolts to secure the three sections together, making sure you link these ribbon cables while you do that. Once you've done that, plug the pedals into the controller, hook it up to your Xbox, and this is your reward. This is basically gamer catnip. Time to fire up the game, and I'm starting a new campaign for this video, so I'll, I'll enter in a name that'll strike fear into the hearts of my enemies. Zorchi Kebab gave me the shits. With my name decided, the game starts to play the introduction sequence. Now, Capcom charged a lot of money for this game, and it seems like a lot of that cost is due to the Mega Jockey 9000, because it sure as hell didn't go into production costs for this intro. Will be the best there is. So you can thank me when I'm busting your powder fresh ass. Is that understood? Understood, sir! It's pretty much the most basic thing you can imagine. But before we go on, let's just hear that guy again. From today, I am your instructing officer, responsible for your VT training. I'm sure I've heard that guy somewhere before. From today, I am your instructing officer, responsible for your VT training. In the following six months of rigorous training... It's Professor K from Jet Set Radio! We're transmitting our signal straight to you! Y'all got your antennas on or what? Yeah, we're right behind a smooth stream of supersonic sound. And I'm your captain and DJ, Professor K. Jet Set Radio! Talking about Jet Set Radio, one of the songs in that game was called Everybody Jump Around. In this song, they managed to sneak in a sample from the Beatles without anybody noticing. Well, everyone except me. One, two, three, five. But I'm 
getting well off track, so let's steer this back to Steel Battalion. So after a few minutes of intro that shows you that you're a new recruit mech pilot about to start your training, just as the base you're in gets attacked, you decide that you can pilot a mech with literally zero training and just jump in. Then you're greeted by the view of inside the mech. So now you begin the game. In most games, you just press the accelerator or the thumbstick and off you go. But Steel Battalion isn't some baby's first video game. Let's just walk through what you have to do to even get moving. One, to start off with, you're going to have to close the cockpit hatch. So press the cockpit hatch button. Two, you need to press the ignition to turn the mech on. Three, once the mech is online, you have to turn on all five of the primary systems. Four, you now have a series of power levels. Once they're all over 75%, you can hit the start button to begin driving your mech. So Steel Battalion isn't fucking around. You've got to do all of this before you can even move in the game. But once you can move, the game hits you with this. Alarms are going off, bullets are flying and shit is blowing up. The hangar door opens up to reveal an enemy mech attacking you straight away. You want to look down and remember which button on Mega Jockey 9000 does what? Tough tits, mate. You ain't got time for that. You should have read the manual. The manual that is so large you could beat a whale to death with. But once you've blown the enemy mech up, you can leave the hangar and go off and destroy the other intruders in your base. These consist of some tanks, which when compared to your mech, are about as useless as an ashtray on a motorbike. There is one other mech you need to take care of in this level, and once you have, the game cuts to a shot of your victory. Now we get the true intro to the game, with the story outlining why suddenly all-out mech warfare has broken out. It's basically nondescript Asian private military declares dick-waving contest against Pacific Rim forces. Once this intro is over, it's on to the second level. But before we talk about that, let's take a much closer look at the Mega Jockey 9000, because the controller is the reason that people buy this game. Starting on the left block of the controller, you have a gear lever, which allows you to walk faster in your mech. You have five switches which control things like GPS, oxygen supply and fuel system. The joystick on this side controls which way the mech's left and right walking movement goes and the little control stick you can see changes which way your mech is looking. On the centre control block you have five communication channels to choose from which are the red buttons. The six green buttons at the bottom control various weapon functions like switching the main and the sub weapons, reloading as well as cleaning the windscreen and putting out any small fires on the mech with the built-in extinguishers. The nine green buttons to the right of this block control the various other functions like detaching an empty fuel tank and changing the colour of the heads-up display. Over on the right controller block you have six green buttons on the bottom which control features of the mech's camera monitors like changing which camera is broadcast to the monitor and a zoom function. The three buttons on the right is something I've already gone over but you also have another joystick. This one is for controlling the weapons. You can either shoot the sub or main weapons plus you have a lock on button here finally on this side you have the best button on the whole joystick the ejector button lifting the cover and pressing the button that is clearly marked with warning symbols is always brilliant although only press this in game if you are moments away from death because it immediately fails the level you're on otherwise also don't forget that there's a set of foot pedals too. accelerate brake and sidestep the sidestep is a lot more useful than you think 
think it first might be. Anyway, back to the game and let's have a look at the second level. And there's a slight difficulty spike here. You have level one's difficulty here. Then if we zoom out a little, a little more, little bit more, there it is. That's the difficulty of level two. You need to destroy 70% of the enemies on the shore. You will be transported with the rest of your team on a boat. You have to wade through the water, up to the beach, and blow up the bad guys. Problem is that there are two huge, great big walls with bloody great guns all over them that will blast the shit out of you before you even get there. So, attempt one, I tried to pass close by the turret wall on the right hand side. I took a lot of damage, then got wrecked by the first lot of mobs I ran into on the other side. On the second attempt, I aimed for the gap in between the walls and missed spectacularly, then got blown up. On my third attempt, I found out I picked the wrong weapon set because the close range weapon just had me lunge all over the place in close range mech combat. I got blown up. My next attempt was going well. I walked the super long way round the turret walls to avoid the gunfire, but when I came up to a mech on mech combat, I forgot to use my fire extinguishers. I took too many hits and got blown up. Steel Battalion is not an easy game. Steel Battalion has 44 buttons on the controller and they are not there for show. You actually need to use all of them if you want to win. There is another Steel Battalion game though. Not this. This pisses is over the good name of Steel Battalion and can fucking do one. I'm inclined to agree with you, Dodgy Kebab. You also have Steel Battalion Line of Contact. However, as it says on the front of the case, you need Xbox Live to play this, as it's a team-based online-only game that uses the Steel Battalion controller. Xbox Live no longer works on the OG Xbox, although there is a group of dedicated players who still do play this game using the homebrew Xbox Kai Link service. But to end this video, this is Steel Battalion, the biggest controller ever for a video game and the game that uses it is totally hardcore. That's your lot, Abbas. <laughs>